Stugatz, I don't know how much you have kept up with the Chicago Blackhawks scandal because it is uh, granular. The investigation that the NHL has done is pretty thorough. It's 140 witness interviews. You've got a, a lot of information over five months being gathered. And now everyone who was in power with the 2010 Chicago Blackhawks is out in the executive ranks. No, nobody in the organization is still working there. And there is a victim left behind of sexual abuse and structural failure in the organization to protect somebody from a coach who was a predator. So Mark Lazarus has been on top of this story, senior writer for The Athletic. He covers the Blackhawks. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. For those who haven't been following the details on what happened here, can you sort of, before we get into how abhorrent it is and how something like this can possibly happen as a structural breach in leadership, can you just take people through a blow-by-blow account of some of what has happened here over the last six months or so in an investigation of something from 2010? Yeah, sure. I'll try to give you the Cliff Notes version. I mean, this is based on, you know, the, the, the there's two lawsuits facing the Blackhawks right now, one from a former Blackhawk from that 2010 team, a Black Ace, and one from a, a former student in Houghton, Michigan, who in 2013 was sexually assaulted by Brad Aldrich, who was the Blackhawks video coach in 2010. Um, the, Aldrich, he, he pled guilty to that one, so that's a conviction. Uh, the, the 2010 Blackhawks won. This surfaced in about May, but the, the main story is, and this is based on the interviews done by Jenner and Block, the independent law firm who investigated this uh, on the Blackhawks' dime, was uh, in, in May of 2010, uh, Brad Aldrich, the video coach, sexually assaulted uh, a Blackhawks player or had a non-consensual sexual event, I think is how he phrased it. And this was brought to Blackhawks' attention on May 23rd, within an hour of them winning the Western Conference Final. Uh, in San Jose, winning, uh, they swept Shan- the Sharks in game four. Within an hour, there was a meeting where this was brought to the attention of President John McDonough, General Manager Stan Bowman, um, Assistant General Manager Jay Blunk was in there, and Al McIsaac, Joel Quenville, the head coach, was in there. That was a new revelation yesterday. Kevin Chevel Dayoff, an assistant GM, who's now the, uh, the General Manager of the Winnipeg Jets, was in there. And basically, it was decided to sit on it for a few weeks because it was going to get in the way of them potentially winning the Stanley Cup. So three weeks after that, after the playoffs ended, after the parade, after Brad Aldridge celebrated in the presence of John Doe, the victim of the Blackhawks, uh, according to uh, the the investigation, he was quietly let go. And, you know, he went on to have jobs in other places, including that volunteer assistant job at Houghton High School in Michigan, where he sexually assaulted a minor. And that is the, the crux of this, is the Blackhawks allowed that to happen by not reporting this to authorities properly and just quietly letting him go. And that's that's where we stand now. And how much blame is there to go around here when you see a $2 million fine for the organization? You've got the shame of it as well. You've got uh, a, you've got damage being done here to somebody who may have trusted authority figures, the culture, the organization, leadership. So you put the blame where? Well, it, there, there's plenty of blame to go around. Everyone in that room deserves some blame. I mean, these were these were grown men. These were adults, and all of them cowed. You know, according to the, the report, John McDonough, who was the heavy-handed president of the team, that he was fired about a year and a half ago for other reasons, uh, just internal politics, things like that. Uh, he ran the Blackhawks with an iron fist. So there, a lot of the blame is falling at his feet. But the fact remains that nobody stood up to him. Nobody said, no, we have to report this. This is unacceptable. The team as a whole, the entire corporate structure of the Blackhawks basically decided to put winning ahead of, you know, basic human decency and protecting the well-being of one of their own players. So, I mean, 2010 to 2015, the Blackhawks won three Stanley Cups. This is the golden age of Blackhawks hockey, one of the original six franchises in the NHL, a storied franchise with, you know, almost 100 years of history. This was the best run they've ever had, the golden age. And it's forever tarnished now because they put winning you know, above protecting their own and protecting future people in other hockey organizations throughout the Midwest. I mean, it's, you know, the, the, the farther you get, the deeper you wade into the granular details of this. And the Jenner and Block report is available online. I would caution people that there's a lot of, you know, sensitive content in there that you might not want to read. But the, the angrier you get about how a, a professional sports team put, as, 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 as Danny Wirtz, the new CEO of the team, who was not a, a, around in 2010s, put it, they put team performance above everything else. Um, Mark, I read the report last night, and it was truly one of the most sickening things that I've yeah. ever read. And I I have been a Blackhawks fan my whole life, so it's even, I feel like, worse because, like you said, it was the golden age of hockey. And I'm wondering if the Wirtz family 
understands like the magnitude of this and how fans are going to really have to regain trust to even like this team anymore. Like it's, it's really hard yeah. right now to even admit I'm a Blackhawks fan. Which yeah. I mean, how, how, a lot of fans are going through yeah. that season tickets are down a little bit. The sellout streak ended. We can, you can blame that on COVID. You can blame that on the fact that the team is Oh five and one, but they had sold out 535 consecutive games and that's over as of their last game. But yeah, there are fans everywhere that are turning in season tickets. They're grappling with their fandom. How do you square your fandom? Something that brought you so much joy, you know, has some of your best memories of your life or with your family, with your your friends, with your 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 parents, your kids watching this team win. And now you have to square that with the fact that you know everyone who is running that team allowed this to happen. And we have to wonder about the players too. I mean, Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane, that whole 2010 team, they said they, you know, Taves told me over the summer that he didn't know about it until the following fall. Uh, at training camp, when words started getting around, I've had other players say everybody knew. Patrick Kane said he didn't know about it. There's, as as Reed Shar, the general block investigator, put it, wildly varying accounts of a lot of this. Ooh. So there's going to there's going to be some questions here. But as if you're a fan, you have to grapple with. And we see this in sports all the time, right? If you, my wife's a Cubs fan, and she had trouble with the 2016 World Series because Aroldis Chapman was on the hill when it was won. That sa- that's that that soured it for her. And now Blackhawks fans have to deal with that and and figure out, you know. If this team, and, and to their credit, they're doing the right thing. They fired everybody. Danny Wirtz has come in. He said all the right things. He apologized on behalf of the organization. He's instructed the lawyers to settle with the two lawsuits, even though he says they have a legal case. They're going to stop with the lawyering and statutes of limitations, all that. They're doing and saying all the right things, but they're doing and saying all the right things 11 years too late. You mentioned earlier that no one stepped up and said something. In your mind, who should have stepped up and said something? Everybody in that room. I mean, yeah. John McDonough was the president of the Blackhawks, and he ruled that franchise more than maybe any executive I've ever encountered. Like, he should have said something, but so should have Stan Bowman. So should have Kevin Chevel day off. So should have, you know, every single person in that room. These were not children. And, you know, Stan Bowman put out a statement. I was a first-year GM, and I trusted my supervisor. No, no, you don't get to pass the buck. Nobody in that room gets to pass the buck on this. You are all fully functioning grown adults in a room that heard a horrible thing and decided to sit on it and do nothing. And that's, that's the legacy of that executive suite. Now you mentioned that Joel Quenville, we learned this yesterday. He is at the front of, uh, you know, the hockey team here in South Florida. You said we learned that yesterday. What else did we learn yesterday with the NHL investigation that had not been known? Well, I mean, the big ones were that Quenville and like I said, Kevin Shevel day off the GM of the Winnipeg jets were in that room. We didn't know we we knew about that meeting. Uh, Paul Vincent had brought that forward and we, we knew about that meeting, but we got the full details of it. And again, we have to clarify everything. The investigation said that there were wildly varying accounts, but this is the conclusion that they drew is that these people were in that meeting. Um, Quenville and Chevel Dave are both going to be meeting with Gary Bettman, the NHL commissioner in the near future to discuss that. I don't know if there will be punishments for them. It, it, it's, it's, I don't know how the league is going to legislate this. I mean, handing the Blackhawks a $2 million fine, that's a drop in the bucket to Rocky Wirtz, who's a you know multi-billionaire owner of the team. But it, 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 the, the people that have been fighting, Stan Bowman and John McDonough and uh, and Al McIsaac, these guys have been with the Blackhawks for so long. They were gonna they're gonna have to apply for reinstatement through Gary Bettman directly if they ever want to be in the NHL again. And I honestly don't know if any team would ever sign them again. And Stan Bowman's a three time Stanley Cup winning GM. That's he in theory, and his last name is Bowman. I mean, he would have a job for life in the NHL. But now I wonder if he'll ever work again. What's going to happen though now that they're being called into Bettman, be, given that they over the off season, there were denials publicly that they knew right. anything. And now the investigation, it's not just that they did it. It's that it would appear that, is there another way to look at that? Other than to say the investigation has proved that they're not telling the truth. It's hard to look at it any other way. You're right. And I don't know what, I don't know the league has, you know, Gary Bettman has dictatorial powers to do basically whatever he wants to anyone who works in the NHL. So he can suspend Joel Quenville and Kevin Shale several day off. I don't think he can kick them out of the league. I don't think that's going to happen. But it, it's, it's, it's a huge story. I mean, Joel Quenville's the second winningest coach of all time. He's going to win his thousandth game this year, which is a huge deal. Only Scotty Bowman's ever done that, Stan's dad. And, you know, the, the Panthers are one of the great stories in the league this year. They're, they're, they're maybe the best team in the league. And, uh, you know, Florida, a market that's been starving for good hockey for so long, lying dormant, waiting to be resurrected, now has this hanging over the head. I mean, you know, what, what does this mean for Joel Quenville? What does this mean for the Panthers? Uh, this, this has, this, the, the tentacles of this stretch across the entire NHL and, and very few teams are going to be, you know, untouched. The, the, the general manager of the Montreal Canadiens is Mark Bergevin. He was an assistant GM of the uh, Blackhawks back then. He was not named in the report. It seems like his denials have some validity to them, but 
there's going to be questions now for everyone who is ever affiliated with that team, one of the great teams of the modern era. What's going to happen to Quenville? What should happen to Quenville? Because you're saying the powers that Getman, uh, that Bettman has, but I don't seem to understand at all what might happen here. I think a suspension of some sort would 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 probably be like, I mean, fining him is not going to be sufficient to a lot of people. But at the same time, you know, if you're the head coach of the team and you're in a room with a bunch of executives, what is your responsibility there? And again, this is the sliding scale that we're talking about with McDonough and Bowman and then McIsaac. And then what, do you, what happens when you get down to Joel Quenville? What is his responsibility there? You know, there are a lot of disturbing things in the in the lawsuits about homophobic bullying to this player in years to come because everybody knew about it and people were saying horrible things to him on the ice, off the ice, you know, it, the, the psychological damage that must have been done. And then there's also this minor victim in Michigan uh, that, 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 you know, basically would never have happened if the Blackhawks had reported Brad Aldridge to authorities. So there's certainly grounds to suspend Joel Quenville. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't think the Florida Panthers are going to fire him over this. I mean, this happened 11 years ago in another franchise. I don't know what you do. It, it, it's a, it, it, it's, it's, I, I'm, it's going to be fascinating to see how this plays out because Bettman can do pretty much whatever he wants. But Joel Quenville is a really big name in this sport. And he's on the verge of a huge milestone. And he's, on, he's the coach of a great team. And I don't know, does he get suspended? Does he get you know, kicked out of the league? I, it, it's hard to envision some of those things happening, but it's all on the table right now. So one of the things in the report, uh, about John Doe was the way that Aldrich allegedly threatened his future in hockey and mm -hmm. um, basically, you know, got him to trust him and and just told him he wouldn't have a career unless he complied and all of these like awful things. And like you mentioned, the bullying afterwards from players who maybe had heard about it or knew about it. And I'm wondering like how much of this inaction and, and Quinville maybe not really realizing the magnitude or not saying anything at the time and, and the focus on the Blackhawks playoffs and the Stanley Cup how much of this has to do with like the culture in hockey and is there like a cultural change that needs to happen in these organizations around these allegations oh, oh absolutely and that's a great question because hockey is still you know hockey is probably the it's weird because hockey is one of the more progressive sports in terms of the you can play project hockey is for everyone you see guys wearing you know pride tape on their sticks and, and they, have, they have all these you know the Stanley Cup has been at, at gay pride parades all these things but it's also this dinosaur of a sport run by people that are you know from a different era dinosaurs that played in the 70s and 80s and it's a backward sport and it's the whole culture, the whole point of hockey, right, is you subsume the individual for the sake of the team. You never say I, you say we, all those hacky cliches, you know, they're true in hockey. And this is an example of that is you don't rate, you don't, don't, the, the words they use, is they didn't want to affect the team chemistry. That was one of the reasons they, the, the, those executives had for, for sitting on this information for a few weeks was they were about to go to the Stanley Cup final and they didn't want to affect team chemistry. That's the hockeyest thing I've ever heard is that, you know, protecting a player on your team could affect team chemistry. And it's true, you know, people think that this is just a video coach. What could he have done? Video coaches hold tremendous power for younger players like John Doe was. He was, you know, he was, he was a black ace. He was playing for the Rockford Ice Hogs for most of that year. You know, the video coach is the one who cuts all the clips to put in front of the coaching staff. He can really frame your career in a lot of ways. Look, this player is good. Look, this player is bad. The video coach has a lot of power. So, you know, the, the, the John Doe had good reason to fear Brad Aldrich's power over his career. He was young. He was trying to break into the NHL. And here's a guy who holds his career in the palm of his hands telling, if you don't do this, I'm going to ruin you. And, you know, it, it's not the hockey way to stand up and speak out. I'm hoping that changes. We're seeing some positive moves in the, it, 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 but you go back to last year and, and, and George Floyd and the aftermath of that hockey was terrible at it. All the other, you know, the WNBA and the NBA and, you know, a lot of these sports were leading the way and, and hockey was just making it up as they went along, kind of, you know, soft shoeing their way through it and, and trying to come up with, you know, ways to look good, but not offend their largely white conservative fan base. And NHL is, a, it's, NHL is like golf. It's all white and it's all conservative. You know, it, it's, it's hockey is a long way to go. In, in, in earning the credibility and, and, the, uh, and the, the progressive thought that other sports have right now. And maybe this is a flashpoint for that. Like I mentioned, Danny Wirtz, he took over as a, a CEO after John McDonough was fired. And he's, he's the son of the owner of the team. So he's, uh, he's a Blackhawks legacy, but he's also new to this. He's not, he wasn't affiliated with the 20 things. He's a younger guy. He's a progressive forward thinking guy. And I think with him at the helm, there's hope, you know, they're putting all these initiatives, initiatives forward to kind of bring the Blackhawks into the light. And, you know, they're doing a land acknowledgement before games now. This is a team that has a cartoon Indian as its logo. We have to wonder how long that's going to last for. Um, but there are there are there are reasons to believe the Blackhawks are headed in the right direction. 
And this was a big step in that process, but it doesn't change the fact that five, five months ago, they were saying, oh, there's no credibility to these accusations at all. There's a long way to go. What about the damage done, Mark? Because in these instances, we talk about blame and who should go. And so they clean house and maybe it doesn't happen again next time, but can you humanize the damage done here? Can you humanize the victims? Well, that's just it. I mean, we, 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 get, we get fixated on the hockey of all this, but there was, there was a child, a child in Michigan who had his life altered forever because the Blackhawks didn't report this to authorities. There is a hockey player on the Blackhawks, a member of the Chicago Blackhawks, who had his life altered forever because of this, you know, years of therapy and trying to work through this and repressed memories. And, you know, I, I've had former Blackhawks players, I'm obviously not going to name names here, but say, you know, they have children that have been sexually abused in other areas of life and they can't, and the anger they feel towards a team that you once loved, that was their family. It's hard to describe. I mean, this is an unforgivable sin. You can do what you can to make sure it never happens again, but nothing washes this away. Nothing makes it right. The fact that they're gonna settle these lawsuits doesn't make it okay. So there are, there's a real human cost to this inaction by the Blackhawks, this, this hockey inertia to just this, this drive to put winning above all else that is going to be felt by these people forever. And, you know, Brad Aldrich, there's a, we've done a lot of reporting on this. Everywhere he went, there's a, his, there's a pattern. He grooms young players. He becomes a little too friendly with them. And then he goes down these, the, in this direction everywhere he's been. The Blackhawks could have prevented that by just saying, don't ever hire this guy. They never really did that. We'll let you out on this note for those listening. Uh, just are there details that we have missed that you find particular, not just from the investigation, but from all your reporting on this, that people ought to see so that they understand how something like this happens, the discomforts around the adults being able to talk about it. We've seen it happen at Penn State. We don't know whether the cultures are responsible for this or not, but what details are we missing that the audience needs to hear on what happened to these young men? Well, I mean, you, you can read the hundred some odd pages of the, of the Jenner and Block report if you want those details. It's it's disturbing. It's it's upsetting. Um, but the, the what it comes down to is you have to decide as did the Blackhawks pay the did Stan Bowman pay a, a fair price? He won. His name is on the Stanley Cup three times. Was that worth what he did? His name is on the Stanley Cup just above Brad Aldrich's forever. That leg, they're forever linked and forever tarnished together. And you have to decide, you know. If, when, when future executives are in this situation, is, is the now worth the risk down the road? Because this never happens immediately, right? It took 11 years for this to happen. We can't under, uh, uh, overstate that. It took 11 years for justice of any sort to happen here. And I'd still wonder if in that position, you know, hyper-competitive, very well-compensated executives make the same decision again or not. I, we'll... we'll I'm sure this is not the last one of these stories we'll all be writing about, and that's that's really unfortunate. Mark, thank you for sharing your information and for the work that you've done on this story. Thank you.